Hello students, welcome to digital class. Today we are going to learn about an exciting topic, rulers and buildings. In the previous session, we learnt about devotional paths to divine. In that, especially we learned about Advaita, Vishista Advaita, the saints of Maharashtra and Annamacharya, Kalidasu and many devotional paths like Kabir Das and Guru Nanak we learnt excellently. Today in this session we shall learn about rulers and buildings part 1. In that we are going to learn how and why the rulers have built so many monumental structures and what was the reason behind that important constructions we are going to learn. Students, if you are ready, let us start. Students, you can observe on the screen, this is the map of India showing about world heritage, cultural and natural sites. Students, you can observe on the screen, it is the map of India, it is showing about world heritage, cultural and natural sites. Let us understand children, there is international institution called United Nations Organization. One of the branches of the UNO, UNESCO is there. UNESCO is nothing but United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which studies about buildings, monuments throughout the world and recognize them as the world heritage sites. That is how in India starting from north to south number of heritage sites are there which have been recognized by the, UNS, the UNESCO. Let us see some of them. Students as you can see at Delhi this is Qutub Minar, at Agra this is Taj Mahal. When you come to south in this lesson it is given this is Brihadeshwara temple which is there at Tanjore. In the same way throughout India wonderful structures are there, we are going to learn about them in this session. Yeah, you can observe in this image, this is Kutub Minar, 5 story building, it is very high, situated in a peaceful area. And also when you come to south, you can see a beautiful construction of Brihadeshwara temple at Tanjore. I am sure children after the completion of this session, you will be able to learn that the kings, nobles, merchants had huge constructions to demonstrate their power. Collect more information about Kutub Minar. Students can locate Delhi, Kajuraho, Tanjur, Orugallu and Madurai in India map. I am sure students after the completion of this session, you will be able to learn that the kings, nobles, merchants had huge constructions to demonstrate their power. Collect more information about Kutum Minar. Locate Delhi, Kajuraho, Tanjur, Orugallu that we call today Varangal and Madurai in India map. Comment on the beautiful carvings on the Hindu temples by the sculptors. Appreciate the architectural marvel of Brihadeshwara temple at Tanjore. Students, let us learn this session in subtopics. Kutub Minar, engineering skills and construction, temple construction in the early 11th century, a new way of building, building temples, mosques and tanks and why were temples destroyed. Students, let us get into the details of this session starting with Kutub Minar. Let us see on the screen how it looks like. Yeah, students, you can see this is the part of Kutub Minar. It was constructed by Kutubuddin Aibak at Delhi in the year 1199 CE. He could not complete this construction. His successor Iltutmish has completed it. The balcony of arches with many geometrical designs and inscriptions are written in Arabic language. 
as you can observe children on the screen this is balcony area you can see windows here some doors are here and here inscriptions are written in two stripes that are written in arabic language yeah he is the ruler kutubuddin aibak who built complete this kutub minar it was completed by his successor sultan iltutmish students let us learn two kinds of structures between 8th and 18th centuries the first structure is for the private use that are nothing but forts palaces and tombs the second type of structures which are used for public public is nothing but people the structures are temples mosques tanks wells caravan sarais and bazaars you can find some of the reasons why kings have built these constructions are kings strived for their subjects comfort and hope to win their praise not only kings but also merchants took up construction activity some of the engineering skills and construction sites are done during this period or monuments provide an insight into the technologies used for construction students let us understand what does it mean by monument monument is nothing but a structure or some of the structures to denote or demonstrate the power of the king or the king installation in the kingdom is marked as monument let us understand architectural shapes between 8th and 13th centuries one of the important structural shape is trabit or it is also called as carbeled shape it is a style of architecture in which horizontal beam is placed across two vertical columns it was used in the construction of temples mosques tombs and large stepped wells as you can observe on the screen children this is the superstructure nothing but columns maybe pillars that are very strong this is the horizontal beam placed on the structure out of which arch is constructed this is the corbelled technique used in the construction of an arch with this technique you could see in delhi a scene in the kawat al islam mosque in delhi the construction used trabit or corbelled shape temple construction in the early 11th century first of all we discuss about the kandariya mahadeva temple dedicated to lord shiva kajuraho was the place this is in madhya pradesh during 999 ce by king dangadeva he belonged to chandela dynasty let us understand children what does it mean by dynasty dynasty is nothing but a group of rulers or group of kings from their generations they belong to one family for example kakatiya dynasty vijayanagara dynasty and so on that is nothing but they belong to one family is dynasty there are some partitions in kandariya mahadeva temple first one is that ornamented gateway which leads to the second part that is nothing but maha mandapa where dances are performed by devadasis or professional dancers the third and the main part of this temple was garbagriha which is also known as main shrine rituals are performed there only kings royals and priests are allowed into garbagriha students let us reconstruct this the kandariya mahadeva temple of lord shiva in kajuraho as you can see this one front part this is the entrance decorated gateway and when you get go to the center and when you go to the center you can find maha mandapa and where this dome shape is that in the center of it there is garbagriha how beautiful it is fantastic construction yeah this is the ground map ground plan of kandariya mahadeva temple this is the area garbagriha 
you can find in rectangular shapes that are corbelled shapes this is garbhagriha this is mahamandapa this is the gateway let us see one more greatest construction of the raja rajeshwara temple which is there it was called as brihadeshwara temple it was built by raja raja the chola king in the year 110 ad at tanjore it was known for its shikara it is also called as the top of temple it was about 90 ton weight too heavy to lift yeah students this is one of the greatest architectural marvels of pandian kings this is the temple we are talking about in the south india which is at tanjore tanjore was the place in nearby madurai tamil nadu but the architects built an inclined path to the top of the temple placed the boulder on rollers and rolled it all the way to top the path started more than 4 kilometers away so that it would not be too steep the path was dismantled after the temple was constructed students let us understand this uh, temple which is very high and shikara was there on the top of the temple you might be wondering this is the time of technology students but just understand in the 11th century and 12th century there were no cranes there were no technology to lift this shikara on the top of temple we would wonder how these people placed that shikara on the top of the temple it is already cleared that they placed an inclined path from the top to ground level as you can see in the image let us understand better yeah this is the ground level you can feel it and this is the inclined path from where they made rollers rolled it onto the top of it a new way of building this is the arcuate a structure in that structure the weight of the superstructure above the doors and windows are sometimes carried by arches the roof also converts to walls and domes yeah students you can look at the picture this is of showing superstructure in a arch shape yeah here also the construction is very clear of true arch at alai darwaza and the second technique they use that they use limestone cement this is high quality cement which when mixed with stone chips hardened into concrete it is extensively used in the buildings after 1190 ce yeah students you can see on the screen this is the construction a painting from the akbar nama dated 1592 1595 showing the construction of water gate at agra fort so in those days there were no technology but people had huge and beautiful constructions building temples mosques and tanks the temple construction demonstrates the power wealth and devotion of the patrons raja raja deva built raja rajeshwara temple notice the name of the king and the name of the god look similar students let us understand in olden days where the kings constructed their temples they thought that they were the incarnations of god that means they are in person representatives of god that's why they named the gods or temples similar to their own names that's how Raja Rajeshwara temple was built by Raja Raja the Kakatiyas built Swayambhu Shiva temple at the center of Vorgallu to demonstrate their power as an independent kings temples are built to show they brought just rule of god on the earth the kings and nobles endowed the temples with land gold and jewels students you can observe on the screen kakatiya dynasty they built swayambhu shiva temple at the center of orugallu that is nothing but varangallu by 1200 ce most of the temples had become elaborate institutions which 
employed hundreds of artisans, dancers, musicians, priests, administrators, servants, etc. Temples thus became centers of political and economic power. Muslim sultans and badshahs. Students, not only Hindu rulers, India was ruled by number of Muslim rulers. During their reign, they started building some beautiful mosques, palaces and some of the constructions which are very very important. Let us see all these. They did not claim to be incarnations of God but shadow of God. Sultan Iltutmish built a huge reservoir just outside Delhi. It was called the Haas e Sultani or the King's Reservoir. Not only some of the kings dedicated themselves for the people's use, reservoirs, wells, but also some mosques, very beautiful. The plan of Jami Masid built by Shah Jahan in his new capital at Shah Jahanabad in the year 1652-1656. If you closely observe children, this image, this is the direction of Qibla direction towards Makkah. Students, let us understand what does it mean by Qibla direction. It is the direction to which all the Muslims pray. The reason? The Makkah is towards the direction. If they pray towards the direction to the wall, they feel that they pray to Allah. This is also one of the beautiful constructions, children. Harmandar Sahib, Golden Temple, which is there at Amritsar. It is attached with the holy tank for the people. It is the beautiful temple of six. Why were temples destroyed? Since the kings built temples to demonstrate their devotion to God and their power and wealth, it is not surprising that they attacked on another's kingdom. They often targeted these buildings. The Pandyan king Srimara Srivallabha invaded Sri Lanka and defeated the king Sena I in the year 831 CE to 851 CE. He removed golden Buddha statue and all the valuable jewels which are there with Sena I. Sena II avenged his predecessor's defeat by invading Madurai and restoring golden statue of the Buddha. Students, by this you understand the temples have been destroyed by other rulers when they invaded other rulers. The reason, temples are the pride of the king. Constructions, huge constructions are pride of the king. If the king is defeated, if the temple is destroyed, they felt that they defeated the king physically and morally. Students, you can observe South India map. This is the place of Tanjur, Madurai. These were the places of Pandyan kings. They also invaded Sri Lanka, which is very close to them. The Chola king, Rajendra I, he is also famous, he is also famous for his constructions. He built a Shiva temple in his capital. He filled it with prized statues seized from defeated rulers. One of the seized materials from the defeated kings was sun pedestal from Chalukyas. Yeah, this is the beautiful shape. You can see it is the shape of the sun. These are not the real images students. For your understanding, I am giving these images. When he defeated other kings, he brought Ganesh statue, Durga Mata statue and Nandi statue from the eastern Chalukyas and Kali statue, Bhairavar statue, Bhairavi statue from the palace of Bengal. Sultan Muhammad of Ghazni, when he invaded India, he destroyed the famous Somnath temple. This is the image of Sultan Muhammad of Ghazni. This is the Somnath temple which is situated at Gujarat. During his campaigns attacked the temples of defeated kings. 
and looted. He became famous by looting Somnath temple in Gujarat. Students, let us understand some of the keywords of this topic. Inscriptions. Inscriptions are nothing but the writings of nobles, kings on the stones or on whatever it may be. Second one is monuments. Monuments are structures, huge structures done by the kings and nobles to commemorate their victory or their coronation. The third one dynasty is nothing but the rulers family belong to one family they state as dynasty. Garbhagriha it is nothing but in temple main shrine is called Garbhagriha where idol of the god or goddess is placed and rituals are done on it. Auspicious is nothing but very holy relating to religion or some festivals. Qibla direction in every mosque there is Qibla direction to which Muslims pray feel that they are turning towards Makkah where there is Allah. A small activity students choose the correct answers from the following questions. The first one what language was used in the inscriptions on Qutub Minar? Option A Urdu, Option B Arabic, Option C Sanskrit, Option D Aramaic. The second question Trabid style of architecture is also known as A Corbel, B Gothic, C Neoclassical, D Victorian. The third one one of the following matches is not true. Option A the Kandarya Mahadeva temple which is situated at Kajuraho. Option B Brihadeshwara temple which is at Tanjore. Option C the Kuwad al Islam mosque which is situated at Agra. Option D Kutub Minar at Delhi. For better understanding of the concepts solve worksheets please visit the official website of SCRT for worksheets. Yeah students we have come to the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed this session looking at the different buildings. In the coming session we shall learn about the imperial structure of Vijayanagara kings who built so many constructions in Karnataka and in Andhra Pradesh and also we learn about Mughal empires constructions especially of Shah Jahan. All the very best. Thank you. Have a good day.